Oh, hi. I finished 50,000 words. I win. So let's celebrate this momentous occasion by putting on a hat and standing in front of the bookshelf background. This is uh, book of the the list is one paper time time was two uh, oh, That's not all. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. So in Commentary the Musical, Joss Whedon sings this song about... Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, me from the other side of the frame, what is it? Well, I was just thinking that there might be some people in your 700 subscriber audience who may not know what Commentary the Musical is. Wow, really? I have 700 subscribers? Uh, yes, as of yesterday, but why don't you explain Commentary the Musical? Okay. Well, Commentary the Musical is... Commentary the Musical is ridiculous, is what it is. You might remember two years ago, during the writer's strike, Joss and Jed Whedon put on the internet this movie musical thing called Dr. Horrible Sing-Along Blog. Which is an internet movie musical about a supervillain with an online video blog. It's better than it sounds. It was incredibly popular, and so there was a DVD release, and on this DVD release was Commentary the Musical. Which is exactly what it sounds like. It's DVD commentary set to music, because Joss Whedon feels that it's his duty in life to turn everything into a musical. Of course, the musical is more comedic, and it doesn't really comment on Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog at all, so much as it has Neil Patrick Harris and Nathan Fillion trying to one-up each other, and the writers whining about stuff, and... yeah. It's funny, but it's also ridiculous. The reason I bring this up, however, is because there is a song on there, sung by Joss Whedon. The song is basically about how storytelling nowadays has become bastardized by these DVD special editions that include the commentaries and the behind-the-scenes featurettes and the deleted scenes and the outtakes and all of this stuff that we now have to watch. And again, the song, like everything else in the musical, is meant to be comedic, but it does actually raise a pretty good point. It seems like today, with the advent of the special edition DVD, we have become much more concerned with the process of storytelling rather than the story itself. I mean, think about it. When Homer wrote the Odyssey, he didn't need to explain himself. His audience didn't need to be told what the story meant. The story stood for itself. But if Homer had written the Odyssey today, then there'd probably be author interviews, he'd probably be asked, what did you mean by this? What did you mean by this? What is this meant to symbolize? I mean, this is much more prevalent in movies, of course, with the special edition DVD, but it's also present in books, because now we kind of seek out authors so we can interview them and probe them and pick at their brain and ask them questions about the process of writing their stories. Now, I know that a lot of people don't like special features on DVDs, and they don't like these behind-the-scenes things with stories because they say it ruins the magic. And as Joss Whedon points out in the song, it does kind of change our perception of storytelling. We put a lot of emphasis on the storytellers, the creators, rather than the creation. And so we are relying on them to tell us, what is this supposed to mean? What were you thinking when you wrote this, when you created this, when you directed this? So what is this doing to the nature of storytelling? Now, before I go on with this, I should explain that I love special features on DVDs. I love watching commentary if it's remotely interesting. I love watching behind-the-scenes featurettes. I love deleted scenes. I love outtakes. Who doesn't love outtakes? And I enjoy hearing about process. I enjoy hearing authors talk about their creations and talk about their characters and get excited about the things that they wrote. But at the same time, I recognize that it does kind of change how we think of storytelling. And it does kind of ruin the magic, because the story doesn't exist as an entity unto itself. It is very much a creation of somebody else, and usually multiple somebodies else, but still, a creation. But here's what I think, and as always, feel free to disagree with me. While I do think that these behind-the-scenes features and this emphasis on process does ruin one aspect of the magic of storytelling, the fact that this story came from someone and wasn't just a divine falling from heaven, makes it more human. And also, I like hearing about an author's interpretation of his own work because I like hearing about anybody's interpretation of a work. It may not be an interpretation that I necessarily agree with, but I still enjoy hearing about it. I still enjoy hearing what his intent was, even though that might not be what I got out of it. Which is why we want to be careful with these featurettes and these commentaries, that we don't allow the creators to spoon-feed the meaning to us. That we take the stories that they give us and find our own meanings in them, because each story is going to mean something different to each person who encounters it. Homer knew that when he wrote the Odyssey, and I think his audience did too. 
When creators start to spoon feed meaning to us, then storytelling really does become irrelevant. When this sort of thing becomes commonplace, and there really is no logical or rational answer to the adolescent question of why doesn't the author just say what he means? Which is why I think we need more authors like John Green who recognize that when the creation leaves the author's hands, it really is truly out of their hands. And more importantly, I think we need storytellers who allow and encourage the people who encounter their stories to find their own individual meaning in the story and not try to force their own interpretations on it. And yes, I'm looking at you, Alan Moore. As always, I invite all of you to tell me your opinions on the matter, and just tell me, out of curiosity, how many of you watch special features on DVDs? If you enjoy watching them, why? And if you don't watch them, why not? Two quick things I want to mention. First of all, yes, I did reach my 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo, and I am actually going to be posting a video tomorrow that I recorded over the weekend of an epic word battle royale among other vlogging NaNoWriMoers. Also, you might remember a while ago I did a Books vs. Movies review of V for Vendetta with Jesse Coder, Coded Lock Films. Jesse and I recently did a commentary of that review, which is available on his second channel, Coded Lock Commentary. And so if you are interested in behind-the-scenes stuff, then check out the commentary that we did on his channel. And that's all for me. See you soon.